Hey, you're tuned in to Dolphins today, and right away, I got to know, there's a rumor out there that the Dolphins might, in fact, be playing another international game in 2024 in Spain. Do you like this idea? Type Y for yes or N for no. Do you want the Dolphins to play in Spain in 2024? Type Y for yes, N for no, and we're going to talk about it, and we're going to introduce some trade rumors on today's edition of Dolphins Today. Welcome in to Dolphins Today. I am your host, Jake Reitman. And on this edition of Dolphins Today, yes, you've heard this before. In fact, the Dolphins played an international game in 2023. And in 2024, they are one of the teams to be rumored to be playing in Spain. That's right. It'll be the NFL's first game in Madrid. And here's the official tweet from Dolphins insider Joe Shad. Madrid will host an NFL game in 2025. The Miami Dolphins and Chicago Bears have international marketing rights in Spain, and that has a lot of people speculating that that will be the matchup in Madrid, Dolphins versus Bears. And just in case you missed our question to begin, Dolphins, today, I'm asking it again, and you got to let me know. So if you skip past it the first time, here's your chance to really answer the question. Do you want the Dolphins to play a game in Spain? Type Y for yes or N for no. And a lot comes with international games, as we experienced in 2023, with the Dolphins playing in Germany against the Kansas City Chiefs. But I think, hey, international games are fun. It's something different. And I know giving up a home game isn't necessarily ideal. But it's an opportunity for the team to grow together, for the team to have that unique experience. Mike McDaniel talked at length about how much fun international games can be and how much it brought the team together. And the Dolphins spent the entire week in Germany in 2023. And I know the result wasn't what we were looking for. It was a good game, 21 to 14. The Dolphins actually held the Chiefs scoreless in the second half of that game. But point being, it was an international game, an international experience that really brought this team together. And there's a lot of cohesiveness and chemistry that can be built when you're in that unique experience of having an international game. So I, for one, even though they lost that game in Germany against the Chiefs, I think it was a good opportunity for this team to grow together as a unit and overall a beneficial experience for the Miami Dolphins to play an international game. Now, I know I already asked you about the Miami Dolphins playing an international game, but how about general? Just general discussion here on the NFL playing overseas. Are you for it or against it? A lot of conversation about the NFL brand growing internationally, the pros, the cons, and et cetera, et cetera. And I think it's fun for the fans, but it does take players out of their routine. Maybe there's an increase of injury risk and that sort of thing. But either way, let me know down in the comments. Type F if you're for the NFL playing international games or A if you're against it. Love reading the comments and hearing from you. So let me know down in the comments F for four international games or A if you're against them. Coming up, I promised we would talk some trade targets with the Miami Dolphins, and we certainly will. But first, I want to make you some money. How about that? That sounds pretty good, right? Today's show is brought to you by Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. All you have to do is go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS, and that's where we have up to a $100 deposit match. And if you're tuning in to Dolphins today for the first time, you're probably wondering, how the heck do you play prize picks? But if you are a veteran with us, you know. You simply pick more or less on a player's projected stat line, and that's when the fun begins. You add a little sizzle to the game, and here's what I'm working with for the big game later on tonight. I know the Dolphins will be there next year, but tonight it is, in fact, the Kansas City Chiefs and the San Francisco 49ers, and prize picks has some awesome promotions. So like I said, I'm here to make you some money. You pick more or less. And for tonight, I'm picking more on Patrick Mahomes. Look at this promotion. This is awesome. All he has to do is get one passing yard, and you've got your more. So I'm picking more for Patrick Mahomes to get one passing yard. Isaiah Pacheco has on some kind of streak finding the end zone, so I'm picking more on his projected touchdown total of 0 0.5. And Christian McCaffrey is a baller, so you know I'm going with the more on his projected receiving yards because he can do it as a running back and as a receiver. I'm picking more on 35 and a half. 
So join me, fade me. Either way, prizepick.com slash CLNS is where you have to go. Prizepick.com slash CLNS. And oh, yeah, we love you and we care about you. So we'll put that link right in the comments of today's video. It's Price Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Pricepicks.com slash CLNS. Now with the Dolphins hitting the trade market, this can get a little bit complicated because, as you know by now, the Dolphins are projected to be about 40 million, 40 to 50 million in the whole salary cap wise come the new league year in March. So that will be one more element for the general manager, Chris Greer, in the front office to consider. But how about some potential trade targets to identify? And we start on the offensive line with a very appealing candidate, Lakin Tomlinson. Now, Lakin Tomlinson is an NFL veteran and has played very well in the interior part of the offensive line, most recently a member of the New York Jets, and was drafted out of Duke by the Detroit Lions. And you look at his 2023 Statistics, he played in 16 games, allowed seven sacks, so a little bit higher than you might like. But again, it's one more guy that can add some depth to the offensive line. And I don't think the asking price will be overly high for a guy like Lakin Tomlinson. And oh yeah, there's one more chemistry element to this conversation. He played in San Francisco from 2017 to 2021 when you might recognize the run game coordinator of that staff. Oh yeah, it's Dolphins head coach Mike McDaniel. So obviously Tomlinson was able to blossom under the coaching tutelage of Mike McDaniel. And when you look at this Dolphins offensive line, there are so many question marks. Starting in the middle with Connor Williams, the center. Not sure if he'll be back. And Rob Hunt, another guy that fits that mold. Not sure if he'll be back. Robert Jones, another guy. A lot of question marks on the interior part of that offensive line. And so maybe making a deal for Lake and Tomlinson would make a lot of sense for the Miami Dolphins. But there is this to consider. The New York Jets, where do they play? That's right, the AFC East, just like the Miami Dolphins. So making a trade in division with the divisional rival sometimes gets a little bit complex because you know the Jets don't want to help the Dolphins and the Dolphins don't want to help the Jets. So that's just one more thing to consider. But I still like the idea of trading for Lake and Tomlinson. Now, I've read the comments and I too share this same opinion. The Dolphins need to upgrade at the tight end position or at the very least add another tight end to complement Durham Smythe. And Dawson Knox, a guy in Buffalo, might see his role diminish a little bit with the emergence of Dalton Kincaid, the young tight end for the Buffalo Bills. And sometimes, as the old expression goes, one man's junk is another man's treasure. Now, relax, I'm not saying Dawson Knox is junk, because I think there's a lot of gas left in the tank and a lot of pass catching ability from Dawson Knox out of the tight end position. And you look at his body of work dating back to 2020. This is a guy that's had a very consistent career, breakout year in 2021 in 15 games with nine touchdowns. And his role in 2023 was limited by the emergence of Dalton Kincaid, the young tight end for the Buffalo Bills. And when you pair Dawson Knox potentially with this Dolphins tight end room, there's a lot of room for receptions to be had. Yes, Durham Smythe was tight end number one, and Julian Hill showed a lot as the backup tight end, but certainly more blocking-oriented than pass-catching-oriented Julian Hill was. And even, I think, back to one of the games, he had the fumble, and I don't want to hold one play against him, but Julian Hill, certainly more of a blocking tight end than a pass-catching threat, and you fit Dalton Knox in, I'm sorry, Dawson Knox in that tight end room I think that makes a lot of sense. But stop me if you heard this one before. Where do the Buffalo Bills play? That's right, the AFC East. And so that in-division trade always gets a little bit complicated. But it's not impossible. I mean, look at the NFC North. The uh, Detroit Lions and the Minnesota Vikings traded tight ends with uh, TJ Hawkinson to Minnesota. So it's possible. There's plenty of examples of in-division trades. And so, again, not totally ruling it out, but... There is a conversation to be had about the difficulties of trading within the division. So the same that's said about the Jets is also said about the Buffalo Bills. And one more complicated part to it, or maybe just a little roadblock that we'd find a detour around. That's where, why Chris Greer gets paid the big bucks. That Dawson Knox is set to make $14.3 million and would certainly need to restructure that contract 
if he were to become a member of the Miami Dolphins. Because stop me if you heard this one before, but the Dolphins cap space situation, not great. Neither is the Bills for that matter. So uh, either way, I think you can expect Knox to restructure that contract so he's not as large of a cap hit on whatever team he's playing for in the coming years. Now, let's flip over to the defensive side of the ball, and that's where we pick up J.C. Horn, the cornerback for the Carolina Panthers, and obviously Carolina Panthers coming off not a great year, and maybe a change of scenery for a guy like J.C. Horn would be a value add for the Miami Dolphins because this is one that makes a lot of sense from the contract side of things as well as the X's and O's side of things. Because uh, J.C. Horn, rather, entering his final year of his rookie contract, so certainly a bargain in that sense for the Miami Dolphins. And when you look at his production in 2023, missed significant time, and so only played the six games. And again, a change of scenery might be very, very beneficial. But in those six games, what do I always say about pro football focus? It's not the end-all, be-all, but it is a very good measuring tool. It's a good benchmark. He was one of the highest graded corners and but again this is in only six games of production but with jc horn looking at the dolphins current cornerback depth chart you could fit him in nicely next to jalen ramsey and i've shared my thoughts on Xavier howard i think he's a cut candidate because he's one of the highest paid players on this roster and the production just hasn't been there the last couple of years so if you decide to cut Xavier howard that certainly opens a position for a guy like J.C. Horn. And we still don't know what to make of Connor Smith yet because we never got a chance under Vic Fangio. But let's say you got to pick one for today's video. Pick a trade target for me if you want the Dolphins to make a trade for Lake and Tomlinson type LT. If you want them to focus on the tight end position and make a deal for Dawson Knox type DK. Or how about the trade for the bargain piece, J.C. Horn? Bargain, simply financially speaking, I think his play certainly warrants the level of a premier corner in the National Football League, but not quite at that point in his career where he's earned that next contract. Matt might come later down the road. But if you want J.C. Horn in a Dolphins uniform type J.H., and for me, it's J.C. Horn. It makes a lot of sense because cornerback is a position of need. I've shared my thoughts on Xavier Howard. I don't, I don't think he's the player he once was. I think he's lost a step, and that's not to take anything away from Xavier Howard because he's had an excellent career in the National Football League. He's been an all-pro. He's led the NFL in interceptions, but unfortunately, he's just on the back nine of his career. He's had some injury issues, and it's time to move on. And again, the salary when the Dolphins are in the position that they are. Sometimes you got to find ways to cut salary. And with Xavier Howard being one of the highest paid players, I don't necessarily see him being a part of the future of the Miami Dolphins. So I want J.C. Horn, and here's what I think a trade might look like for J.C. Horn. I don't think you'd have to give up too much for him. In fact, that 2024 fourth round pick should be enough to uh, accept a trade from the Carolina Panthers organization to send J.C. Horn to Miami. And given the Dolphins' draft capital situation, I think we could expect to see the Dolphins' front office make some trades either to acquire more draft capital or to acquire a proven player like Horn at a position of need like cornerback. So try this one on for size for me and let me know what you think of this trade idea with a great A, B, C, D, or F. Again, a fourth-round pick in 2024. For J.C. Horn straight up, I think that's a win-win for both these organizations, and it would go a long way in helping the Dolphins cornerback situation. No matter what happens with the Aqua and Orange, we've got you covered. All the free agency coverage, all the trade coverage, and of course, everything you could possibly think of leading up to the 2024 NFL Draft. And so when you consider all that, it's real simple. Subscribe to the channel. You're going to love it. If you're a Miami Dolphins fan, this is the place for you because we bring you daily content. And how about a huge shout-out to today's producer, the one and only Big Tex, helping us make Dolphins Today possible. And another edition of Dolphins Today in the books. Thanks so much for joining us. And as always, fins up. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And we'll see you next time on Dolphins Today.